Okay, so welcome back from your, uh, your weekend. We're going to continue today in the world of Rhino, uh, but we're going to go from 2D into 3D. So we're going to do a little bit more drawing in two dimensions, and then we'll start to play the two together with the third dimension. Um, we'll concentrate on a few kind of key commands. One of the commands we'll learn today is the project command, which is probably one of the most important things that Rhino does. Uh, and it takes a little bit of getting used to. So today it will feel really hard. It will feel really challenging for a while uh, as we go forward. And then all of a sudden it'll sink in and you're like, oh yeah, I just project every time I need to do that. So it's a little weird at the beginning, but then it'll start to make some sense. So um, I have the, the drawing that I have left over from last class. You probably have a little bit more detail in it than I do, uh, which is just fine. But it's going to be the place that I'm going to start from when I, when I work to to build forward. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to ask you to do in exercise 204, part one, is to draw the building's elevation. And so if you guys remember back to the world of, uh, what would it be, 131? I think it's, that's the drawing one, right? Yeah. Uh, where we did projections and that sort of thing. You often did a top view and then a front view and then a right side view. Does that kind of ring a bell a little bit? The same relationship obviously happens in the computer, and we can use that to our advantage uh, to actually draw some things. Now, in reality, as you go forward, there's going to be some ways of shifting the drawing plane in three dimensions so that you can just draw not and not have to do this flat and then rotate. But in the early stages, it's often a lot easier to stick with just drawing on the ground and then rotating in a position. And we'll get to the more complicated st strategies as we get a little bit further down the class. But I don't want to overwhelm you just yet. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you to something called the Layers uh, Palette. It's over here on the right. Uh, I think it's actually the Layers window, technically. Uh, it's over here on the right side. And by default, you probably have a layer called Default. Uh, and then below that, you probably have layer 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, depending on which template you opened when you started in Rhino, you may or may not have these layers pre-existing. Uh, the layers are very, very easy to work with in Rhino. Uh, they live over here on the right side. Uh, and we can move objects from layers by selecting the objects. So I select the objects. And then you right click on the layer that you want to put them on and say change object layer. And those objects will now be on that layer. The color of the object reflects the color of the layer. So in this case, layer 1 is red. Therefore, when I switched my objects to be on layer 1, they turned red. Okay? I can change the color by double clicking on the color and I can pick any one of a bunch of predetermined colors, or I can obviously pick any color of the rainbow that I would want, including an RGB value or, or what have you. For the most part, the default colors are just fine. You're, you're very rarely going to be too picky about the colors. Um, the only colors I would stay away from in Rhino are the yellows and light oranges, because they will distract you from what is being selected, because the selected things turn yellow, uh, from what is not selected. So don't make layers yellow. Uh, that'll just save you a headache down the road. So I've gone ahead and I've done that, but I'd also like to change the name of this layer so that I don't have to keep track of layer 1 anymore. So I'm going to double click on layer 1 and I can then uh, select the text and rename it. We'll call this floor plan. Okay. You can come up with any naming scheme you want. Um, one other thing that I'll point out right now is that Rhino includes nested layers, which would be really nice if like AutoCAD included nested layers as well. Uh, but we can have a master layer and then some sub layers, and there's a little new sub layer icon. Um, and that helps keep organized on a, uh, like let's say you guys get to the final project, you'll probably have a couple hundred layers uh, if you do the project right. So there's going to be a lot of layers and you want to keep track of everything. So nested layers become really, really important. Um, this has more to do when you, when you get into materials and assigning materials to s specific objects and that sort of thing. The layers help. So anyway, for right now it doesn't really matter. We're going to stick with the basic. I just wanted to point that out that it exists. Below that, uh, on layer 2, um, I'm going to rename that layer to be uh, front elevation. Right? You could call it the south elevation uh, if, if you were using a traditional north-south uh, setup here. So the other thing is that whatever layer is current, whatever layer I'm going to do the drawing on, has a check mark next to it. So if I were to draw something right now, that would end up being on the default layer, okay? because that's the layer that has the check mark next to it. If I don't want it to be, oops, 
If I don't want it to be uh, on the default layer, I can change the layer. And I can do that by clicking where the check would be further down the road. Okay, So I check here, front elevation, that's going to be my layer. And now I'm going to go ahead and start to draw a little bit. And of course, if the projector comes back, you can watch me. Otherwise, you can't. <laughs> Give it a second. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start to draw this front elevation, and I'm going to do this by pulling some guidelines for myself. So I'm just going to use the polyline tool. Once again, I have my persistent object snap enabled here. If it's not there because your computer got restarted, I haven't gone around to all of them and double-checked it yet. I have your notes from last, uh, or last class. Um, if it's not there, it's under Tools, Object Snap, Persistent, oops, persistent O Snap Dialog. You want to make sure there's a check there. And I'm going to use the end snap here, that's checked, and I'm going to use the polyline tool right here, and I'm going to draw some reference lines. And I'll start at this corner of the building and I'll draw straight down. Let me turn on ortho so that it stays straight. And I'll draw a line. I'll go to this corner of the building and I'll draw straight down. It doesn't matter if these are even right now. And I'll go to this corner of the building and I'll draw straight down. Okay. The next thing that I'm going to do, and these are again just construction lines, I'm going to end up deleting them, is I'm going to create a base for my elevation that's just a, a horizontal line. Okay? And I'm just using this as guidelines. Okay? Then I'll use the offset command to create the top line. Right? I could obviously I could draw it. I'm just trying to reinforce the skills that you learned last class. So I'll use offset, which I will type offset, or remember I can go up to curve, offset, and then offset curve. Sorry, for those of you that can't see it, hold on, let me make it toward the top. Can you see that? Does that work? A little higher? Okay. So there it is. Uh, so I'm going to do offset. The distance, I'm going to do 8 feet. Typical wall, interior wall is 8 feet. Now, we're not going to get into the technicalities right now about you know, actual buildings and foundations and how, wall, how tall a wall is from the outside versus from the inside. We're just going to stick with standard sizes. We'll do 8 feet. So I have 8 feet set. And it's going to say select curve to offset. And I'm going to select this curve. And then it again wants to know the direction. So I want it to be going up. So I'll click so that it's going up. Okay. And so what I've just done here is I've created kind of a, uh, an overview of what this elevation is going to look like. And so now it's time to draw a little bit more specifically. So I'll come back to my um, polyline tool. And I'm going to go ahead and start to draw and I'm, let me turn on my intersect here. And I'm going to start to draw out this facade. So I'll draw a box for this piece of it. And then I'll draw a little horseshoe. Oops. For here, there, there, and there. Now once I've done that, I can actually delete these guidelines so that they stop confusing me. And I'll end up with what looks like a, a basic set of rectangles. This, however, is representative of what this is going to look like in 3D. And if you're having a little bit of trouble visualizing it, um, we'll, when I get to the 3D portion, it should make a little bit more sense. So as I continue forward, I know I have a couple sets of windows here, and I'd like to at least draw in the boxes for those windows. So once again, I'll use my polyline, and I'll come in here, and I'm going to draw some guidelines down. this. And I'm right clicking to repeat the last command as I go through. And then we'll pull these down as well. So you could, you could come back each time and select polyline and do this. So I've drawn those down as guidelines. That's going to tell me where the windows are positioned. Now I need to actually draw in the windows. And so um, I'm going to draw in the, the windows, um, and I'm going to use kind of standard size windows. Again, this is not a class that's technically about construction and about window sizes and about header heights and that sort of thing. So whatever you decide, is, it works for me. Right? You don't even have to be able to walk through the doors. I don't really care. This is about learning to model, uh, not about the technicalities. So um, I'm going to go down from this intersection here, and I'm going to, again, I'm going to use that object tracking, the smart tracking that uh, we used last class, where I set a point and then drag down, if it's 
it's going to let me. Come on. Oh, you're going to be so annoying, aren't you? Well, we'll drag down this way. And I'm going to go down um, one foot four inches. And I'll draw a line across. And that's going to be the tops of my windows. And again, if, if you do two feet or one foot, it really doesn't make any difference. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and draw out my windows themselves. And so I know that this window, uh, it seems to me, I forget what the, the dimensions on it were. Do you remember how wide this window was? It's the same as the one up at the top. Did I do 18 inches or 24? Was it 24? Okay. So it, I know it's 24. Uh, let's say I want a four foot tall window. So I'm going to go ahead and use the rectangle tool here. And I'll start at this corner. And remember how we used the coordinates before? Right, so I'm trying to reinforce. You notice that in the beginning here, right now it's review of what we did last class. Right, then we'll get to the new stuff. So this is review, and I'm just reinforcing things. So I'll use the absolute, or the um, not the absolute coordinates, the relative coordinates to draw this rectangle. So I'm going to type the at sign first because it's relative to the point that I started from, and I want to go t the x direction two feet. So I'll type two feet comma, and then the y direction, which is down, which means it's negative. So I'll say negative 4 feet. And then I'll hit Enter. And it will draw this rectangle for me. There's the rectangle. Okay. So I can repeat this with another rectangle right here. And this is at uh, 2 feet, comma, negative 4 feet. And it draws the next rectangle for me. I'll come over to this point, and you see how since I pulled these lines down, it makes it really easy to create this drawing. I'll once again go back to the rectangle. Now this one is four feet across, and it's going to be four feet down, so it would be at four feet, comma, negative four feet, which is right there. And then I'll do it one more time here, and I'm going to say at four feet, comma, negative four feet. And there it is. So if I get rid of my guidelines here, press delete, and I get rid of that guideline here, we see that I have each of the windows established. Yes? How far down from the top of the I did one foot four. Uh, a typical door, if you're walking through a door, is six foot eight. So if I did an eight foot ceiling and I did the math, it would be one foot four to get me to eight feet from six foot eight. That's why I did it. But again, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so. I, I could continue to add detail to this, right? I could continue, I could put a, uh, a window frame around each one of these. So for example, I could do offset, distance, uh, and we'll set that to be, I don't know, three and a half inches. And I could do a little frame that goes around the window. And then I could make up the window itself. So we'll repeat offset, and we'll do a distance. Uh, 1.25 inches, and we'll do a little frame there, and we can make it look like a window. Okay, That isn't really what this part of the exercise is about, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it very plain, just as the holes. And now we start to get into the new part of this um, uh, this Rhino um, file. If you get done with this elevation view, right, we're going to continue and do elevations on the other sides and use those as well to create the rest of the windows. So I'll show you this first side, and then I'll turn you loose, uh, and you can continue with the elevation. So again, this is relatively simple. I'm going to switch from the top view, which I've been working in primarily all day last class, and then I've worked in thus far today, into the perspective view. So I'll double click on top, which is going to take me out of the top view into my four views, and then I'll double click on perspective so that I can start to see this in three dimensions, like this. Okay, And now we're going to start to work in actual three dimensions rather than seeing everything flat. You can see right now that everything's perfectly flat. Okay, So we want to actually start to create some 3D objects. So first thing that I'm going to do is um, use what's called a rotate 3D command to rotate this object right here into the third dimension. So right now you see how it's flat? right? I want to rotate it so that it's standing up on end. And I'm going to use something called Rotate 3D to do that. And it's under Transform. And then we used regular Rotate last class. But this is going to be Rotate 3D. Okay. 
So first option, it's saying select objects to rotate. And so what I'll do is I'll select my object like that, and I'll press enter when I'm done. So I've done that. Now the next thing it's going to do is it's going to ask me for the start of the rotation axis. Now since I'm rotating the objects in three dimensions, right, if I have my object flat like this, what it's asking for is it's asking for an axis that I'm going to rotate. So if I wanted to rotate this object up so that it looked like that, right, the axis of rotation is right here. Right? So that's what it's asking for first. So the axis of rotation in this particular example is right along the base of this building. So I'm going to click here, and then I'm going to click at this end of the building. Okay? Then it's gonna, Rhino's going to give me this circle on the end. And this is part of how it helps you um, know what you're doing. Right? It gives you a little circle there. And I'm going to snap from here up to this point. And so I'm going to pick this part of the wall right there. And then as I move the mouse, you can see, see how it flips up? Oops. Obviously, I, I right click to rotate so you can see it. Do it again. There, start of rotation axis there to there. We're going to go from here, and we're going to flip it up in that direction. So now, where it was flat, it's now up in the third dimension. Make sense so far? Okay. I'm going to repeat it one more time so you can see it. Right. Once again, it's under transform and then rotate 3D, or you can type rotate 3D. Se select objects to rotate. It's going to be those objects. I'll hit enter. Start of rotation axis is going to be right there to right there. Okay, angle or first reference point. I'm referencing this point, and I want that point to then fold up to the top. Okay, and so now I have that standing up in the third dimension, which is great. That's exactly what I want. Okay, so we're going to move on to actually starting to create some some objects, uh, and we're going to do that using the extrude command. And so before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and switch from my front elevation layer to a new layer that I will rename to be walls. So let me double click on it, and I'll call this walls. And again, I want that to be the current layer, so I'll check walls as the current layer. Okay. I should have also pointed out that any of these objects, you could choose to lock the layer, and then you wouldn't be able to select it if you, if you wanted to do that. Okay. So next piece of this puzzle is that I actually need to extrude these objects. Um, and so depending on how I've done this, Right? I may have more than one object to extrude, which I do in this case. I've gone ahead and I've joined the walls together, uh, which is good. I'm ignoring for right now the windows. Right? We'll get to the windows in just a second. But for right now, I, I have the walls that have been joined together. And it's important to join the walls together because it'll help create the nice, clean object when you extrude it. If you have overlapping lines, Right? It won't join all the way closed, and that's a good way of finding that, oh, wait, I have lines that overlap, in which case when you extrude, you'll get two surfaces instead of one. Everything's fixable, but it's always cleaner if you join before you do this. So if I had uh, a set of objects that weren't joined, it would look something like this. When I go to click on it, I'd get a single line rather than uh, a closed loop. So I'm going to hold down Shift and select all the way around. Object. Something like that. Once I have them all selected, I'll type join, or I can go, I think it's under transform. It might be under edit join. I, I always get the two confused. As you can tell, I never go to the menus. So uh, it would be edit join. And it's always important when you do a join to read what it says. Right? So after it's done with the command, in this case it says 10 curves joined into one closed curve. That's good, that means there was no overlaps and it's a nice closed curve. So now that I'm to that point, I'm going to use the extrude surface command. And it's under surface extrude, uh, excuse, extrude planar curve, right? It's extrude curve, right? Uh, or you can type extrude curve, which is what I usually do. So we're going to go up to so surface extrude curve straight, sorry. Okay, which is also just the extrude. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this curve. 
right? And I'll press enter when I'm done. And now I'm going to start to get a three-dimensional object. Do you see how that's starting to, to build up an object in space? Okay. Now, I want to look at my options here. So I, again, I have an option for both sides, but I don't want something going down, too. I just want it coming up, so I'm not going to check that. Now, the next one is solid, and that me basically means do I want there to be tops on the walls and bottoms on the walls, or I, do I want them to be open? Uh, generally, you're going to want to say solid yes. So I'll click on solid and make it yes, and if we look carefully at it, we can see that it's, it's putting a little, sorry. Try that one more time. Sometimes when I try to demonstrate something, <laughs> I accidentally click. So it does have a little bit of a surface on, on it, and we can see it by these little lines on it. It's indicative of a surface. So at that point, we can continue. Do I want to delete the input? For right now, we'll say no. Right? The rest of these are just fine. So what I'll do is it's asking more, me for an extrusion distance. So how tall do I want this to be? Remember we said 8 feet before? So I'll type 8 feet and I'll hit enter and that will then set it at 8 feet. Uh, notice in this instance I don't have to pick whether it's going up or going down, right? Because I typed in 8 feet it's assuming it's a positive number and I want it to go up. If I wanted it to go down I would type negative and whatever the value would and that would mean it would go down. So as we look at this right now it doesn't look all that fancy because we're in wireframe mode. So I want to switch into solid mode so we can actually see what's happening here. And so I'll click on the little triangle next to perspective and change from where it says wireframe to shaded. And when I switch into shaded, we can see that I have uh, a nice wall that's been set up there. Now sometimes when you're looking at something, in this case the, this blue might be a little bit hard to, uh, to see. Um, I can select it, uh, excuse me, I don't even have to select it, and I can change the color of the layer. Sometimes gray is a little bit easier to see. So if I switch to gray, you might be able to see it a little bit better, right? And so you can obviously change the, the colors. Uh, and if you're in 3D, a lot of times the grays work a little bit better. Okay, so now I'm going to repeat the process for this other uh, wall right here. So I'll go up to surface, extrude surface, or excuse me, extrude curve, straight. Select curves to extrude, there it is. Uh, I'll hit enter because I'm done. Okay. Now I look at my options. I want to make sure that it's set for solid, which it is. The rest of these options are just fine. And I can set my extrusion distance so I can type 8 feet again. Or because I have my snaps active, right? I can snap to be the same height as the other wall. And just click. And that gives me the second set of walls right, for this particular piece. Make sense so far? Okay. Now, I have a couple um, doorways that have been cut through. Right now the doorways go all the way. If I wanted to enclose these, I can use the same strategy that we've been doing. So let me go ahead and draw a curve, polyline, from here to there, to there. I'm going to turn off intersection for now. There and there. I can then extrude this curve. So I'll go up to surface, extrude curve straight. Same thing here, but this time I'm going to go down, and it was negative one foot four. Oh, and I didn't pick solid. See how, here's a good example. See how I didn't pick solid, and it's hollow? Right? I'm going to go ahead and delete that, and we'll do this one more time. There it is. Surface, extrude, curve, straight. Solid, yes. Negative one foot four. And there it is. Okay, So I can repeat the same process over for each one of these doors. Uh, I could also just use a rectangle, which might make it a little faster. And then we could go to surface, extrude, curve, straight, solid, yes, negative one foot four inches. There it is. Then we'll come over to this last one. This time I'm actually going to use one of the primitive shapes, which is just the box makes my life a little bit faster and I'll drag it down uh, one foot four inches Oops. negative one foot four sorry negative one foot four inches and I've now made the top of that okay so you see how I'm pretty quickly able to to pull those up 
and make that shape. Okay. So now, if we're looking at our elevation, we had some windows on this wall. And if I were to turn off my walls layer, right, we can look back at the floor plan and say, yep, there's those windows that were there. Likewise, if I look at my elevation that I drew, there's the windows. Okay. So when I turn my walls back on, and we look at the wall, the wall right now is solid. But I need to find a way to punch through the wall where those windows should go. So this is where we're going to use a command that's called project. And this is, again, one of the more valuable commands that's in Rhino. It will save you many, many times down the road. Uh, but for right now, this is the first time you've done it, so it's a little bit hard to um, get used to. What the project command does is it takes an object that's floating in space, and a a as you set it up, it will take this and project it straight onto these surfaces, right, as it goes through the object. So the hardest part to understand about the project command is the projection will occur in the view that you're currently in. So if I tried to do a pr project command here in the perspective view, and I type project and I went to do it, it would go straight along the axis of my view. So it actually wouldn't hit anything. Right? It would go off into, like if I was projecting here, it would go straight into the screen, and it wouldn't hit any object. Right? So I need to switch to a view, and a lot of times it's helpful to see all four views at once. I need to switch to a view, it's going to be the front view, that shows my object right, where what I'm looking at perpendicular is the way I want to project the object. So I'm active in this view when I initiate the command. So once I'm in this view and we can tell that it's active, a lot of times if you zoom in and zoom out in a view, it'll, it'll for sure make it active. It's also highlighted. It says front versus these are a little bit um, lighter gray. Yeah? When you're using the, the project command, is it going like, to project all the way to the different layers? It will project all the way through anything that it, it, it uh, touches. So it'll go all the way through. Now, if you don't select the object, it's not going to project onto that object. You do have to select the object. Okay. so. I'm in this front view, and I'm going to use the project. And I always type project, so hold on one second. It's under curve, curve from object, project, right there. And we're going to look at what it says. It says select curves and points to project. So not only will it project curves, but it will project points. Uh, we're only interested in the curves. So what I'm going to do, and I'm, you can do this with more than one curve at once, which is probably how you will want to do it. For me, I'm going to do it each as a separate one so you see me do it over and over again. Okay? It's going to say select curves and points to project. I'm going to select this curve. And again, I'm selecting it in the front view. I'm not selecting it over here in either of the other views. Okay? I've selected it, and I'll go ahead and press Enter. Then it's going to say select surfaces, poly surfaces, and meshes to project onto. Right? This is the, what it's going to project onto. What surface is it going to project onto? So I need to select right this gray surface. And so I click on it in this view again, and if we look over here in perspective, we can see it in reference. Right? We've, we've selected that particular piece. I didn't select the other piece. I just selected this one. Okay? So we look up here. That's the surface we want. I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And when it does it, we can now look up in the perspective view. You can see that it took this curve and it projected it straight or perpendicular to this front view through these objects and gave me, right, as we look at this a little bit bigger, nice little holes or nice little curves at each place where I want the windows to go. Make sense so far? Right, pretty easy. So at this point, I'm going to use the trim command, just like we used trim last class. Uh, so I'll go to edit and then trim. And I'll go ahead and click on the surface and I'll cut a hole through where that goes. Okay. Then I can move over to this side. Notice these two windows lined up, so it made life a little bit easy. Uh, we can go ahead and do this. Oops. Go ahead and trim. I have to select my curves. There it is. Uh, we'll go to Edit, Trim. Now I'll click here and click here. Okay. And so now those are. I'm looking through the windows. Okay? Now, if I look carefully though, I can see the inside of the wall, which I don't want to see. Okay? So I'm going to do one more thing to close that off, and that is that I'm going to select the curves and I'm going to lock them together to create a surface that goes right along uh, the inside there. So we'll go up to Surface, Lock. It's going to say Select Curves to Lock, and I'll pick 
the inner curve right there, or the outer curve, and then the inner curve. Like that. And when I hit enter, it's going to say direction, right? which is fine. The defaults are always fine. And then I'll go ahead and say OK. And it now has a nice little surface that's on the inside of my window. Make sense so far? OK. So let's flip it around and do it for this end. Once again, we'll go up to surface, loft, select one curve, then the second curve. And then I'll hit enter, enter, and get my loft options, and I'll say OK. And now I have a nice little hole that punches through. Okay? So I'm going to repeat this whole process for the next window right here. I'll jump into the front view. And actually, let's look at them all so we can watch it happen. I want to make sure that front view is the active view. Then I'm going to use the project command. So it's curve, curve from objects, project. Select curves and points to project. It's going to be the second window here. I'll hit Enter. Select surfaces and poly surfaces to project onto. Right? I need to be able to select this poly surface. I'll go ahead and hit Enter, and it will then project my second set of lines right here. But notice that it also projects lines over here on the wall. I don't need those or want those. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and hold down the Control key. One of the things that Rhino does that's important to recognize is that Rhino has different options for selecting and deselecting. And so it doesn't matter the order in which you do it, um, but like in, if you're in Illustrator or AutoCAD, a lot of times it's just the Shift key that selects and deselects. Rhino is very specific about the Shift key adds to the selection, the Control key subtracts from the selection. So I'll hold down Control, and I'm going to deselect these two curves which leaves me with just those curves selected in yellow. And I can press the delete key and make those go away. Okay. Now we'll come back to these two curves there and there. Oops. There it is. Okay. Now I'm going to use the trim command again. So edit trim or type trim. And I'll click inside of those and I'll cut a hole. Okay. Now that I'm done, I'll press enter. Then I can immediately, because they're still selected, I can immediately go into the loft command. So I'll go to surface and then loft. I'll hit enter and then enter again to finish. And it creates that nice little hole for me. Okay. So now I've punched a hole in the back, and I've punched a hole here, and I've punched a hole here. Now, in the floor plan, if I were to turn off the walls again, right, we do have another window over here to create, but I haven't drawn the elevation over here yet. So I, I can't project those just yet. I could, however, if I really wanted that, I could mirror the curves. I could mirror this curve, for example, across here to this side. So for example, mirror. Mirror, curve, like that, and I could use that to trim. Just another way of doing it. Okay. So once you've created one, don't forget that you can use the geometry that you've already created to reverse engineer the other pieces. Okay. So anyway, I'm not going to do that one right now. I do, however, have a couple more left. I have these windows. So let's once again go back to perspective. I'm going to go to the front view. And I'm going to project this curve this time. So I'll go to Curve, Curve from Objects, Project. I'll select this as my curve. Okay. Hit Enter. Then it's going to say Select Surface. I'm going to select that as my surface. And you can see that I've selected the opposite side this time. Um, and I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And it will then project through my object with these curves. Okay. There is another option for how you create windows. Um, I typically don't teach it at this stage, but some people find it really useful to learn it early. Um, and it's hidden underneath the, um, I just have to remember where it is. It's hidden underneath the double circles here, and it's called make hole. Right? And it's going to say select planar cl closed curve. There it is. I'll hit Enter. Select surface or poly surface. There it is. And it's going to say depth point. 
and so I want to make sure I snap to the opposite end, and it will then create the hole for me. Okay? It's another way of punching these holes through. Uh, to me, the project and trim is a little bit easier to grasp early on, but I at least wanted to point this out for those of you that feel like you're, you're picking it up really fast. Uh, sometimes that's an easier way. So once again, I'll repeat it for this back window, and then we'll go back to the other method one more time. The thing about Rhino is there's always a lot of ways to do the same thing. And so if you're comfortable with one way, you do it that one way. If you want to try a different way, you can try a different way. So once again, I'll go up. It's under the double circles here. I'll click and hold, and it's right here under Make Hole. Okay, It's going to say Select Planar Closed Curve. There it is. I'll hit Enter. Select a surface or poly surface. There it is. And my depth point is going to be to the back of the wall there. And it'll then slice through. So it's a different way of doing it, but it's pretty easy. What it does is it, it skips the loft uh, part of the command. Oh, so you don't have to do that loft part. All right. So let me go ahead and uh, go to this one. We're going to do one more project with this window. I'm again going to make sure I'm in the front view. I'm going to type project. Select surfaces to project onto that surface. I'll go ahead and hit enter. And it then projects my double windows here. And as I get a little bit closer, I'm going to go ahead and do the trim command, which is edit and then trim. And we'll click and get rid of the middle there. We'll flip around and click and get rid of the middle. And now we end up with the two holes. I'll go ahead and hit enter. Now I can't loft all four of these at the same time because I won't get good results. So I do have to deselect two of them. So I'll hold down control and deselect those two. And then I can loft these together. So I'll go to surface and then loft. Hit enter and then enter. That builds that one. And now we need to select the curves here. So I'll hold down shift to select both. And then once again surface and loft. Enter and enter. And I end up with that hole as well. Okay. So um, you don't have to follow exactly the, the, the sizes of the windows that I did. Uh, that's just an example. What I want you to do is to continue working with this object. If you finish this elevation and those projections, move on and try to do a different elevation and, and practice doing the projections again, because the project thing is, again, one of the most important commands that you can learn. Uh, if you want to play around and add your kitchen and whatever, that's obviously okay too. The reason that I leave some open-ended stuff, like if you want to add your kitchen or you want to do that, is because some people will finish this very quickly, other people will take the whole day just to do one projection. And it doesn't matter which boat you're in, you will all get to the same place at the end. It just takes a little bit of, of time to get used to Rhino and that sort of thing. Okay? So, I'm going to turn you loose to work on it. I will obviously help you through any, any sticky points when you get stuck. Uh, but that's how you use the project command, which is, again, the most important thing that we're learning today uh, in this. You do not have to build anything more than just this. No floors, no ceilings, nothing like that. Just the walls and just the project. Okay? Do make sure you save it, and I would recommend using file save as, uh, and then renaming. Right? We had exercise 203. Let's call it exercise 204, and then save it. And when you go to print, you'll do the same thing that you did last time. Hold on a second. There it is. You'll go to File and then Print. Uh, and you'll see kind of the 3D view. We can again go to the window and make that a little bit bigger. There it is. That's what you're going to post for today. So change the printer to be the JPEG. Uh, and then you'll post that that as your, as your work for today. OK? Question? Um, yeah, I was Okay, so if you need to change layers, let's say, like on this, I accidentally created these, these two lines and they were on the wrong layer. Uh, if I select them, so I'm holding down shift to select them, I can then click, right click on the layer that I want to move them to. So if I wanted them to be on the walls layer, for example, I could right click on it and then say change object layer and it'll move to that layer. Right? You can also see information about, let's say you have an object and you don't know what layer it's on. So I have this object, I don't know what layer it's on. If I click the Properties window, it will tell me right here under Layer what the, the current layer uh, that it's on is, and I can change the layer from right there as well. So I can change the walls. So again, multiple ways of doing the same thing. Okay, any other questions for everybody? <coughs> no? Okay. Uh, I'll come around and help you guys.